on the warm evening of July 3rd, 1908, an Italian man sat in the Greek sun, sweeping away the sand beneath him. He was sitting in a basement, but not a basement like you and I would know, but a basement thousands of years old, destroyed by the harsh destruction of time. He stood on ground older than Christ himself. He dug until he found an old chunk of clay protruding from the ground. After successfully pulling it from the ground, Luigi looked at the disc. What looked back at him was an anomaly that would stump historians for years and perplex the greatest minds of this earth for a century. What the Italian man Luigi Pernier had found would later be coined the Faistos disc. He found it in the supposed basement of what used to be the palace located on the Greek island of Crete. The palace was supposedly used during the Bronze Age, which lasted from 3000 BC to 1200 BC. The Bronze Age marked a primitive time in humanity where people started to prosper, making metal tools such as scythes and axes to help them develop. This was a time which was not as well documented as the rest of history, so every shred of evidence was exceedingly valuable, which leads to the discovery of the disc. The disc Luigi found was made out of clay and had multiple unidentified symbols which include tools like axes, bows and saws, people like children, people with helmets, animals in the center of the front side of the plate and birds like doves, instruments like flutes. This gives us a great insight into what the Bronze Age was like. The symbols were in a spiral formation. People concluded that it reads from the center and then continuing throughout the spiral. What it reads is complicated. There is no solid conclusion as to what it reads. Ique de riune, curiate, ique sidate, yesi tuti, ique ranake, retue, iwa vua sunariu, yoye, ique curia, ique wa wa te raisui, sana, ique curia, iwa vua sunariu, yoye. Ique curia, ique wata rariu wa, ve riu hi da, curia que, ique paye nadate, su uke, ique wa wa terai sui, paye, su uke. There have been several people who have claimed to decipher the disc, but there has been no solid conclusion. Now that you know some of the context, let's get back to our protagonist, Luigi, an Italian man named Luigi. Where have I heard this before? Anyways. So after finding this plate, he turned it to Heracloin Archaeological Museum of Crete. It became a national treasure of Greece, cherished for many generations to come. This is a place where the artifact would be locked away from investigators for years, as analyzing it could cause damage to it. This is where we get into the interesting part the theories and investigation. The first and most obvious one was that some Bronze Age lads got bored and decided to scribble pictures on some clay. The pictures were meant to signify a scripture or function similarly to the Caveman comic book. There are some holes in this first theory though. Even though all the evidence links back to the fact that it comes from a Bronze Age, when investigators got their greasy hands on it, they discovered tampering. The first investigators allowed to fully inspect the disc discover signs of tampering. There were signs that some of the symbols have been re-stamped. But this isn't solid proof that that was tampering. In fact, none of it was solid proof at all. Who was behind the accusations? In 2008, a man by the name of Jerome Eisenberg wrote a paper suggesting that at the time, the 100-year-old disc was a hoax. In this paper, he accused Emil Gilleron of being an accomplice in the forgery. He said that it had a similar aesthetic to some of the other Bronze Age discoveries. The evidence suggests that Gilleron was present at the time of the discovery. On top of that, some of the drawings were illogical in their portrayal of certain things, drew such as shields, birds, and strainer. A greater and most notable, boobs. Yes, seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, don't feel ashamed. Even your ancestors had hentai, apparently. Despite this, most archaeologists 
think that the disc was authentic. The more pressing argument is that no similar disc or language has been discovered. But my personal theory addressed that. Let's get back into the theories, shall we? Okay, now we've covered the two most plausible theories. Let's get into the wild and wacky ones. The theory that I present myself is as follows. As the disc resembles no known Bronze Age hieroglyphs, I suspect that on that lone Greek island, before it was largely populated, there was a tribe of people who died out. Either before or during the Bronze Age, one of the last surviving members of this tribe attempted to document the history of their tribe and inscribed it onto the disc in the language that they wrote in. But that language was no longer spoken at all. This is my personal theory. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Although it really makes you think, what if all our history and language are lost to time? What if future generations have nothing to remember us by? What if language ceases to be spoken again? Sorry, didn't mean to get so depressing. Now on to some other theories presented. Aliens. You knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. So the theory states that it was given to them by aliens and that the aliens made the language. There is no evidence suggesting this, but it is interesting nonetheless. Let's get back into what the disc actually means. In 2018, some analysts tried to prove that they had deciphered the disc. They said that the first side talks of a pregnant goddess and the other side reads of the same goddess. Well, not the whole thing was deciphered, as you could tell, but they got a decent way through it. There have been many more attempts to decipher it, but the one that I have just read has been strange and incoherent. Believe it or not, a pregnant goddess who glows is the best translation we have right now. Now, our protagonist, Luigi Pernier, unfortunately died in August 18, 1937. He died in Rhodes, Greece. In the same country he found his master discovery. Seems fitting. But in conclusion, the Phaistos disc is one of the most enigmatic objects in history. It has been hotly debated over the span of a century and has been the talking point of many historians for years. But one thing always rings true, that the mystery of the enigmatic Phaistos disc will forever remain an enigma. Thanks for watching. If you really enjoyed it, then don't forget to like and share. If you like this type of content, then subscribe for more upcoming videos. There are some weird and unexplainable anomalies out there, and I'm doing my part to share it with the world. Catch you on the next one. Peace.